This is your girl Lala here, aka known as the baddest woman on YouTube right now as we speak. First and foremost, if you are new to my channel, make sure you go ahead and click on the subscribe button down below. And also, make sure you turn on your notifications so you get notified, you know, I uploaded a new video. So, I am here today to talk about Smackdown Live 1000 episode. I just finished watching it and when I tell you, it wasn't bad at all. You know, it started out with Truth TV. Unfortunately, they got canceled. I don't know why. It was awesome with Carmella and R-Truth and their dance breaks. Dance break! And that song, I need to find out what that name of that song is. If you know what's the name of that song, please comment down below. Okay, comment down below. I don't know if that's some stuff on me. In addition, also, you have the McMahons showing up. Stephanie, because, you know, she was the first GM on SmackDown. Then you have Shane. He was the GM on SmackDown. Then you have Vince McMahon. He's the, you know, chairman of WWE. So, you know, he had to show up. And they was part of the dance break. It was awesome sauce. Ooh. So sorry. It's kind of late. So, that was fun to watch. You know, the McMahons, you know, going at it as usual. Stephanie and Shane. Typical sibling rivalry, but that was fun to watch. Then you have AJ Styles teaming up with Daniel Bryan. Um, I saw this come in the bitter end. Going against the Usos. I'm not even going to lie. Like, that match was straightly good. Like, they took each other to the limit. But, you know, there was a little boo-boo there in the match. Because of that, the Usos won. Um, congrats on the Usos for getting that W. Then also you have... Going forward, because it was a lot of people showing up. Then you have ever then there was a segment where we saw all you know former GMs and our new GM page backstage. We saw Vicky Guerrero, holla holla holla, Teddy um why is it Teddy Riley? Lord Teddy. Okay, can't forget him. Why did I call him Teddy? That is not his name. Yeah, yeah, Teddy. I think his name was Teddy. I'm sorry. But holla, holla, holla. Then you have, um, who else was there? Oh my God. Then you have Mr. People Power. Oh my God. I, I can, I cannot. He even had on the blue and white. He had on a white suit with a blue shirt. He was like really repping SmackDown hard. Hashtag, I was like, oh my God, I can't. I can't. Teddy Long. Why did I say Teddy Riley? You know what I'm thinking, Teddy Riley? I'm thinking like the singer. So Teddy Long, my bad. But I know his name was Teddy. And he was like the bomb.com GM. That was the same dude who will always be doing like 10 tag, ten, a 10 was it a 10 tag team match? I'm like, Jesus Christ, Teddy. Jesus, Teddy Long. What is we doing? Well, yeah, well respected. Then, as time progresses, we had a little segment when it came down to, you know, the whole thing with, and I can't stress this enough. We had freaking Aiden English. Woo. Excuse me again. We had the whole segment where we had the Miz versus Rusev, so they could have the spot for the crown jewel. But look who shows up. Freaking Aiden English. And then um who was that commentary? Kurt Angle. Because you know Kurt Angle was at SmackDown too. But he was supposed to be on quote unquote on vacation. So um that was fun. In addition, Aiden English tried it. And what Lana did, she kicked him in the balls. So kudos to her about that. Now, I'm sorry, I'm kind of like all over the place because tired, ready to go and sleep. And I'd rather spill this tea now than somebody else do it, you know, somewhere on their show or on their channel. So I want to be the first one to give it, you know, much appreciated. But then you have, um, the New Day defending their titles against the bar. 
All of a sudden, we hear Big Show. So we thinking, okay, Big Show's here to speculate. No, he he messed it up. So now the bar is new SmackDown champions, tag team champions, Jesus Christ. They're going to wreak havoc on SmackDown Live. I can see it now. So sorry. I can see it now. I really do. I do apologize if I keep on yawning. It's very late and I had a long day because I decided to come in for overtime and I need extra money. So it is what it is. So in addition, then we had Evolution. First of all, I'm sorry, but it was a little, it wasn't like the evolution like from before. It looked it weird. I mean, I don't know. It looked it kind of weird. Like they didn't want to be near each other. I mean, yeah, Ric Flair, he was there. He wanted to be near everybody, you know. He, he cool with everybody, but you know. Randy Orton was just there, just be there. He don't like, he just came in. They said, okay, you know, you about to go on stage now. Let's go. Triple H was like, hey, they want to stand next to Batista. It was a hot mess. And then, like, what was crazy is, like, Randy Orton was throwing, like, he was the one who was reading for first. <gasps> Ooh. Sorry, Randy Orton was the first one to be reading, folks. Talk about, oh, Ric Flair, you're living through your daughter. And then Triple H, you're busy in the boardroom. Oh, Batista, you never been in the ring for a while. You've been on a makeup chair. He was just reading, folks. I was like. Bitter much? What's up? You good? You already beat the mess out of Jeff Hardy. You already beat the mess out of Ty Dillinger. Broke the poor boy's fingers. Like, ooh. Stop. You know, then you have Triple H says his piece. Then you have Ric Flair says his piece. Now we have Batista. I don't know. The way he, like, he said, well, he talked about Randy Orton. He talked about Ric Flair. Talk about Triple H. Now he got he got the Triple H. He was like, oh well, you got a chance to beat everybody except for me. Everybody's like, ooh, it got so tense. I think they quickly just turned on the music and kill the music. It was tense, and you could look on Triple H's face like you motherfucker, like you. Mm -mm. It was tense, like mm -mm, this ain't over. I don't know what what happened with Batista between Triple H. <laughs> Hey, Batista, but it, it's kind of ugly, I guess. And it's just like, it was so tense. And even the commentators was like, yo, this tension was like thick. So who said they might face each other? But Triple H got to deal with Undertaker and Kane along with Shawn Michaels. Now going, now going on, we had... The cutting edge. Edge grew his hair out and it's not even bad. He got a little grays on his beard, but it's it's okay. And he's trying to talk some sense to Becky Lynch, but she ain't she ain't, she ain't trying to hear that. She's like, look, I'm the champion, whatever, get out of my ring, don't hurt your neck. And I'm not gonna and I you know what? I really, really, really had that same energy even after she snapped on Charlotte Flair. I still had that same energy for her. Cause one thing I never did was Go around and say, oh, because there was a lot of people out there saying, oh, Becky Lynch is trash. Really? Trash where? I mean, the girl been wrestling since she was like, what, 15, 16? It's just that she been getting played left and right just for other people for the come up. And she got tired of it. Sure, I would have been mad too. I would have been, had, I would've been, if I was champion, I'll tell you right now, I'll be walking around like I have like the biggest ass. No to no to the century. So trust me, I would have had an attitude too. I'm sorry. If y'all been playing, if I've been getting played left and right, been called a loser, been all this, and now I'm the champion. What you gotta say now? Nothing. Nothing. The her and Charlotte went at it. <gasps> the crazy part is Edge just stood there and just watched him fight. Like he just stood there. So. They went at it. Then the next match was with Rey Mysterio and Shinsuke Nakamura. But before Rey Mysterio went on stage, you know, to perform, to wrestle, um, he came across Jeff Hardy. You know, they reunited, which that was cool. Um, and one thing I liked about SmackDown is that they showed, like, different pictures of, like, segments that happened on SmackDown, on uh, SmackDown, like, way in the past. Also, they did play some, play the song, like, that was, like, very old school, 
on SmackDown. Um, I may leave the link down below of that song too. Um, just in case somebody wanted to know what it was. Then um, you have who else you have? Then you have you know the Undertaker. True story. My mom was in my room. <gasps> and we was talking. And all of a sudden, the gong went off. Yo, when I tell you, I had chills. I had chills. Like, I just jumped. You see the Undertaker come down the ring. He ain't had to say nothing but a few words. He said, look, I got three words. But Shawn Michaels and Triple H, rest in peace. Now it's to the point with the Crown Jewel now coming up. Now nobody has to say anything about the Crown Jewel being canceled. So I guess it's a go. Yes, with WWE, hopefully. I guess Undertaker's going to make Shawn Michaels regret for never ever coming out of retirement. So let's see how that shit goes. And you know what? He ended off with, he ended off SmackDown very great. With that stare down in the back. You know when he when he walks away and he, he looks back at you and he raises his arm around? That shit is sickening. But, and I want a little slide in also. So all in all, my opinion of SmackDown Live, 1,000 episode, I will give it like a 9. I will give it a 9. Um, also, what was funny was when Kurt Hawkins and freaking Edge reunited and Kurt Hawkins was showing him his shirt. Edge was like, no, I don't understand it. I don't get it. Um, I wish Zack Ryder was there. That would have been nice. Um, but all in all, I give this, you know, 1,000 episode of 9. You know, everybody came through when they needed to be and it wasn't trash. Um, all in all, Rey Mysterio, big um, congrats to him. He got the W for... Going to the Crown Jewel for the Best in the World World Cup. You got the Miz going, um, Best in the World World Cup. And that was all because Ada English ass, with his whole Milwaukee scandal shit with Lana, interrupted it. And Lana kicked him dead in his balls. <laughs> she said, boop. I said, oh, God. Rusev beat his ass. And then we had appearances by Jerry the King Lawler and Booker T, a.k.a. King Booker. So, you know, that was fun to watch. You know, two kings commentating on the New Day match against the bar, even though the New Day lost. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What is left for them? What is left for the? What is left for New Day? They don't got the titles no more. But they are five-time champ, tag team champions. So, um, the bar needs to catch up. Just saying. And also, I'm going to slide this in there. Who saw Monday Night Raw? Because... I was here for it. Yeah, you know, we had the shield, having a little squabble. Dean Ambrose feels the type of way. I'm like, oh my God. I, to be honest, I didn't even watch that match when they tried to do that redeem match. I just found a notification that, you know, the shield won against <gasps> Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, and Drew McIntyre, and then we had the segment with Alexa Bliss and Mickey James and Trish Jadish and Lita, and you know, all in all, you know, they was like, you know, Lita and Trish was ready to go, but Alexa Bliss and Mickey James was like, no, we're good. I'm like, okay, I'll just go back to the back room about your business, but. You know, welcome back to Tamina Snuka. Oh my God. That girl was giving me hair, 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 hair. And her and Nia Jax went at it again. Yo, I don't know what it is, but when these two women go at it, it's like Clash of the Titans. Like, I remember when they went at this um, Survivor Series, everybody lost their shit. When they went at it on Raw, everybody lost their shit. I'm sorry. Then, all in all, when Nia Jax and Ember Moon won, I don't know what the hell everyone was thinking. Thinking, like, she is trying to throw over. No, I think it was that Tamina was, like, in her feelings. So, her and Nia Jax went at it. Ember Moon was trying to break it up. Shoved out the way. Tamina, got, Tamina kicked Nia Jax in the face. Then, Tamina and Ember Moon did the so-called alliance. Like, throw Nia Jax over the rope. Then 
freaking Emma Moon tried it. It didn't work. So Dana Brooke sticks, uh, stuck her nose in it and threw both of them over. And she thinks, well, I think I can do this in evolution. Hey, more power to you, Chale. More power to you. Then we had the tag match with AOP versus Kurt Angle, but they thought it was Kurt Angle in the Coquistador suit, and it was not. It was some Joe Schmo. What Kurt Angle did, out of nowhere, he gave freaking the manager of Dillard's freaking, oh my God, manager Macy's, manager Express, Baron Corbin, a freaking Olympic slam. That's what he get, trying to be petty and stuff. Then we have, I, I ain't gonna lie though, I wanna know with, who dresses Drake Maverick because his, his style is be, be on point. Especially that jacket he had on. But to match with AOP, oh, that was giving me life. Then you got Bobby Lashley. Who Bobby Lashley was going against? It was somebody new too. It was, no, it was somebody like, oh my God. I'm trying to figure out who he was going against. He was going against somebody. And you, because oh, I couldn't, the only reason why I can't remember because I couldn't keep my eyes off of Leo Rush because he had on this bomb ass blazer and he has on no shirt and he had on these pants, have on dress shoes. I'm like, why they got this man coming out here looking like a reggae dance hall artist? I'm done. I'm done. Like, I'm so done. Like, they got this man coming out here like a reggae dance hall artist. He already has a microphone, but you know what? He's a good fit for Bobby. He's a good fit for Bobby, so sure. If I, if y'all like it, I love it. Sure, I ain't mad at y'all. WWE did something right. Hallelujah. Then I wanted to bring this up so bad. I commented everywhere. Whoever had this posted, the confrontation with the Bella Twins and Ronda Rousey. First of all, what pissed me off is these two women decide to jump this woman. They come showing up on Raw looking scared, like, oh my God, oh my God, what she's at? Oh my God, is it safe to go to the just room? Oh my God, girls, y'all was not about that like it's two of you. What the hell are we doing? Then y'all showed up with security. I was like, oh, that's a that's a weak move. That's a weak bitch move. Like, I'm sorry, you showed up with security for one woman. That means a weak bitch move. You're not about that life to them. But with the confrontation, y'all talk about, oh, oh, we don't deserve you. You don't, we don't owe you one. We feel we don't owe you one. You over here name dropping. Oh, we, oh, um, I'm a producer. We're producers. Um, we got a brand. So does Ronda Rousey. Just saying. The read, the shade was real. The minute Nikki said, oh, we've been knocking down doors more than you have in your career in WWE. She's like, my class is like, first of all, man, the only doors you knocked on was freaking John Cena. He kicked your ass out. Pretty much, bitch, he, she just called her a thought. I was here for it. Like, Nikki did not know what to say. Like, bitch, you don't go against somebody who is not going to come at you sideways. Like, you know they're going to bring up John Cena. First of all, speaking of John Cena... What's, what's going on with his hair? He look like he is somebody's dad, like picking up somebody's child from soccer practice. Cause he was at SmackDown too, and he mentioned about his time being on SmackDown when he first, you know, confronted Kurt Angle, ruthless aggression, you know, all that type of jazz. Um, I'm just saying like, bruh, fix that hair. But back to the shade thrown, being the shade being thrown. It's like, girl, you knew what you was doing when you you and your sister want to be cute and jump Ronda Rousey. She's like, oh, what you gonna do? Break our arms? Ronda Rousey's like, bitch, I will break your arm and beat you with it. What's good? I'm like, you know what? Nikki Bella is actually the Nicki Minaj and Ronda Rousey is the Cardi B of this situation. Hands down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Brie Bella is the raw Ali. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, I will be looking forward to Evolution. I need to see how this goes because I'm sorry, but I don't see Nikki as champion at all. I Because for one, she's part-time. Two, she's still injury-prone because of her neck. We're not doing this. And if they end up putting that title around Nikki's waist, I promise you the whole internet wrestling community is going to be pissed. Okay? Okay. But this is all I have today. Please comment, like, and share this video. And you guys have a good day. Or should I say good night? Bye.